we're living really in exciting times. Exciting times of unprecedented change in technology. And we saw traditional technologies taking off, getting the maturity and becoming legates. But in the same time, we see new technologies with a pace of change and an innovation accelerating we've never seen before. And they are hooking up. So, and we're getting these kind of S curves here. And, but maybe in simple words, simply said, we are now seeing exponentially growing technology. But if you just think about this, the questions will be raised about opportunities, but as well on the same time about risks. And the most dominant question may be, are we destructing the apocalypse by artificial intelligence? Do we see the destruction of mankind by a Terminator like Arnold Schwarzenegger in the movies? Or um, will we have something like the free laws of robotics somehow regulating these kind of things? And if you ask me personally, I would say the future will be bright. But why am I that confident about this? Simply by two hypotheses. So first hypothesis is about we are already living in a world full of weak AI. Nothing harmless, nothing scary, but we're already living there, and you can't stop it anymore. The second is, we saw a paradigm change, namely technologies for the people, not people are working for the technology. And based on these two hypotheses, I'd like to explain you a little bit about what we'll see in the future, and how to prepare a little bit for this. But let me double click first on the first hypothesis about weak AI. So in general, there's a differentiation between weak AI and strong AI. Some may call it narrow AI and general AI, but this doesn't matter, it's the same. So weak AI is about behaving intelligently, creating some algorithms, models who work intelligently, but having no conscience, no experience like man. The other one, strong AI or general AI, or some may call it super intelligence, artificial AI, um, is behaving as well intelligently, but is having conscience, is having an eye mind, is having a voice in his head. And it's still a long and hard, tough journey to come from weak AI to strong AI. And at the moment, we don't see this coming. So, we are living in a world of weak AI, not harmful, not scary, sometimes crappy and bad implemented. Some of you may remember the Google picture fail, the gorilla fail, here on the right side. Some have may heard or seen Microsoft turning down Tay, the Twitter bot who became sexist, racist, homophobic, all at once. So, um, and we will see this in the future as well. So there's still a long and hard journey to go. But still, companies are heavily investing into AI. It may be Facebook, Amazon, Microsoft, but most of all, it's Google. And this is a quote from Sundar Pichai from 2015 from the developer conference I.O., uh, who said, we will move from a mobile first to an AI first world. Just think about this. Most of you are digital natives, grown up with your smartphone, and we're now moving from a mobile first world to an AI first world. This was a tipping point in the strategy of Google. Last week, at the Google's developer conference, I.O., they presented the focus on Google Lens, combining augmented reality with artificial intelligence. They presented a supercomputer based on TPUs, tensor processing units, a new architecture augmenting CPUs for machine learning, or some maybe popular things like the Google, uh, Google's Home Entertainment, but all of them with one denominator, artificial intelligence inside. But there's still a big hype about AI, and if we have a look on the capabilities of AI and you trim it down to some similar services, 
you can demystify this. So capabilities of AI services may be language processing, vision processing, and processing of sound. And if you drill down there, this is simple services like object detection, object tracking, face recognition, natural language processing, and so on and so forth. And you can pick these kind of services, bundle them, and create a new service. Create something totally new, disruptive, providing experience to your customers. One of the most obvious is for sure the autonomous car. So you can have a big uh, object tracking for the way how the car is driving, or object recognition to recognize before a crash, whether it's a little child playing or just a big rock there, and the car is making the decision and the trade-off what to do. But there are, as well, some use cases, and we see companies in our daily, okay, <laughs> um, supporting our daily habits um, using artificial intelligence. So if you want to travel the most beautiful city in the world, Vienna, uh, you may use Airbnb. And if you do so, the pricing algorithm is based on artificial intelligence. It's maybe taking some popular elements, like the geolocation data, of course. Where are you going to stay in Vienna? It's maybe a little uh, different. But as well, some more obscure, like the way how a picture is taken, because it's attracting people in a different way. And Airbnb acquired Crash Better in 2012, and they're heavily investing still in this. Maybe another question, uh, who of you knows Tinder or Zeus? Uh, or I ask it in a different way, who has heard of this but not, is not using this? <laughs> um, yeah, that's what I thought. All of these companies are heavily rely on big data. They rely on artificial intelligence to try to find the perfect fit, to provide an experience for you, not for you, but the ones who are using this. Um, to satisfy them. And I hope I can convince you that we're already living in a world full of weak AI. And it's not harmless, uh, it's, it's relatively harmless. The worst thing that could happen to you is a, uh, a bad date, but that's life. Uh, so, but let me talk a little bit about my second hypothesis. <clears throat> we managed or saw a paradigm change from people adopting technology towards technology adopting to people. And there are five trends underlying this, describing the future. First trend is AI is the new UI. So we previously were used to work on desktops, on, on mobile phones, etc. Now in the future, we're going to use Alexa, Cortana, whatever it is as a digital assistant. We're talking to robots. And artificial intelligence will be the new user interface of the future. The second trend, it's all about platforms. Previously, you had strategic partnerships between companies working together, while we now see a huge trend towards ecosystems and platforms working together. It's nothing new. Some of the... Uh, uh, most known startups in the world like Airbnb, Uber, purely rely the business on platforms. 70% of the unicorns in Silicon Valley have a platform business. But if you just think about this, to do so, you require big data. And if you have a hell lot of data, you want to monetize this data. And how to do this? by artif using artificial intelligence, machine learning, and so on and so forth. Data is the new oil, and artificial intelligence will help you to monetize this. The third trend is about how we're going to work. We see that people, the companies are moving to an on-demand labor. It's not about starting with the, at the age of 25 in a company until you retire. It's about having a liquid or fluid workforce, a flexible workforce, however it's called. But the workforce, the marketplace will dramatically change. But you need to manage the supply and demand and how to do so. For example, MasterCard 
Airbus, the World Bank, they are using Gigster as a platform to manage the supply and demand and to attract on-demand labor. Gigster, not surprisingly, is using artificial intelligence to do it in a very efficient way. The fourth trend is that the design and interaction will be of a small group of people or individuals. We're coming from a world where design is made for every, uh, everybody, independent of their behavior, of the life stage, of the value to the company. And this is now changing. Based on micro segments or individual habits, design is going to change. But this requires the processing of big data, real-time processing, streaming architecture, and the best companies in the world are using technologies like this to really provide an experience to individual people or at least micro segments where a small group of people are behaving in the same way. And the last trend is about creating new industries, setting new standards. Netflix started as a DVD rental company. Last year, they won eight or nine Emmys. I don't know, no exactly, but um, how they are doing this? Netflix is using artificial intelligence to get the information, the analytics, to get information about the people, what they want to see, what should they recommend to what kind of people. And the way how they're going to produce the, the movies, the series, it's mainly based on artificial intelligence. And companies working in that way will win the race. So I hope I could a little bit convince you about technology will, will transform our life to the good. And you saw as well one common denominator in this, which is artificial intelligence will be the most dominant technology in the future. Ultimately, you have to ask yourself, are you ready? Are you ready for a future or a world where maybe your future job does not exist yet, has not been invented? It's up to you. You have to prepare yourself because society is not prepared. Society was never prepared, independent if it was the Industrial Revolution or any other change. It's up to you. And please do me one favor and one f oh, I have one favor and ask for you. Prepare yourself. Thank you.